Okay, so let's take a look at building the head using splines. Now the main benefit to using splines is that you can draw out a more accurate shape here in the side view or whichever view is more appropriate. Um, you can draw your splines in Illustrator and you can then save them out, uh, making sure that you save them as Illustrator 8 format um, because that's the one that which is understood most by Cinema 4D or you can use the built-in Cinema 4D spline tools which is what we'll do here. I'm going to start with a linear spline um, and the reason we'll do this is so we can block out quickly and then adjust the spline afterwards. So starting at the top front of the head I'm just going to work my way around. Now I'm going to draw a straight line across the top there, one down to the back and then to the underside back of the chin kind of neck area, down to the back of the chin, then to the front of the chin and then when I've got to this point, rather than trying to kind of join it up there, I'm just going to go over to the attributes and press the close spline button. And then I'm going to hit the space bar to drop the spline tool. And you can see what we've got here is just the, the kind of the profile of the head almost. It's not quite perfect. But what we're going to do is make sure we're in point mode by clicking that icon over there or hitting the return key, which will scroll between the three different selection methods or di different kind of attribute methods. And I'm going to hit the V key, which we can use to bring up the edit spline menu. Um, and we're going to use the chamfer tool. We've got this, this point here selected. Now, if this was a kind of a, a square shape or a, a, a more regular shape, we could select a few points at once and affect them all at once. But because these are all slightly different angles, I'm going to do them individually. And I'm just going to click in the viewport and drag and if you look over here it tells us the radius of what we're doing you can also choose to make that just a flat kind of a, it's more like a bevel than a chamfer um, but we want this rounded because the shape of the head is rounded so once you've done the first one hit the spacebar drop the tool move on to the next one hit the spacebar to bring back the chamfer tool and we'll do the same again we'll go to just a little bit different there and happy with that next one we're going to do this all the way around now this one I'm going to make a bit bigger I'm going to make this much more kind of almost like an arc between the two than just a, a chamfer and that's looking quite good now you might see I'm just clicking on the top of the viewport here so that when I hit the space bar I can drop the tool you can either do that or you can come up here and just select the tool yourself manually onto the next one space bar to bring back the chamfer tool and the reason I'm doing that, by the way, is because as I adjust the, the, the figures over here, if I then draw in the viewport again to try and click off, I can't because the spacebar doesn't work because I've been using this text field. And if I then click again, it's going to jump for both of these points like so, which just looks wrong. So I'm just going to Command Z to undo that. I can hit the space key, choose this one on the top, back into the jump for tool. Now I'm going to go up to around 10 or 11 I think maybe a touch more 12 will do drop back to the front and I'll do this one here as well and this one I'm going to go up to between 9 and 10 and I'm just judging these by eye at the moment but you can see see what's going on and I'm happy with those now what we can do to arch out the top of the head is just hit the key to bring up the knife tool now because in the last video I used it in loop mode that's kind of been selected by default for me so I just want to go into line I want to chop a line through the top there hit the E key for the move tool and I'm just going to lift this up just a touch now I'm going to go back into my chamfer tool which I can use this icon to just scroll down the list and find it which is just a touch quicker than hitting the V key and going through the menus and I'm going to make this one pretty big because I want to really kind of smooth this out in fact, I'm just going to type in 1500 there and see where that gets me. That gets me right to the end. Okay, and that's good because that gives me just a nice curve over the top. And I may do the same across the front. So, K key, find the center line ish. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that will do. I'm going to select that and just move that out just a little bit. And this time we'll just do this a slightly different way and we'll go soft interpolation. 
And that means rather than being a hard kind of angle, it's just going to smooth it out for us. So I click off and now we've got the profile of our head done. And then that's kind of quicker than using the deformers from this viewpoint, but we've got still got some work to do. So this is much more precise when it comes to tracing over um, the concept artwork that we're using as a reference, which is fine. Um, and it's definitely a boon for certain situations. Uh, this one's not quite so vital and still happy with the way we did it with the box modeling method. But if we go into the, our perspective view, you can see what we've got is just this spline. So we now need to make this into geometry. Now up here in the hypernerbs that we used earlier, there's also an object called the extrude nerbs. And we're just going to, holding down the option key with our spline selected, we're just going to add one of those into it. So the spline is now a child of the extrude nerbs. And we're going to make sure that's selected. And in the attributes manager, you can see that the, the directions that our extrude can go. And at the moment, you can't see it very clearly, but this is still flat geometry. There's no depth to it at all. And that's because the extrusion is going backwards, kind of along itself. And we can just type in zero in the z-axis and we'll have one flat polygon. And what we want to do is play with the x-axis. So we need to go down into our front view and we need to kind of extrude this out. I'm using the arrows here in the x-axis field until it gets to the top edge of the head and that's on 126. But what we want to do is eventually we're going to move this over to the right so that this center line actually becomes the left and the right hand side will stay where it is. So we need to double this and double 126. By the way, if your maths is awful, what you can do is 126 and just put in times two and it will do it for you. Really useful. That's quite a, quite a good tip, I think. And uh, a lot of people haven't realized that, but you can type in different maths of different kinds in here and it will work it out for you. So now I'm going to choose to move this back over by 126. So in the X axis, if I write minus 126, oh, I need to be in object mode for this. And I forgot my minus, so just put in my minus there and that's moved it over. So that shape is now bang on the middle and we know that the center of this object, this extrude nerves is bang on the center of the, the Y axis there, which is exactly what we need. And if we go into our perspective view, you can see what we've got. Now, there are some more things that we need to do here. And that's because this is kind of, we can't smooth off these edges properly yet. We're gonna do a little bit with the caps, but this face here is actually a separate object to the other faces, the kind of the, the faces that wrap around kind of surrounding the x-axis. So what we need to do is just go into the caps mode and we're going to use a fillet cap which will give us our smoothness around these edges and I'll do that for both the left and the right and I'm going to zoom in here so I can see just a little bit better what I've got going on and you can see we've got one level of smoothing so it's more of a bevel than a smooth at the moment so let's turn the uh, the steps up to Oh, that's the the far side. So we'll we'll do the 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 end first. So I think probably five might be a touch too much. Let's go for four. And size wise, let's just pull back. I think we can go up to maybe seven centimeters. So we'll just replicate those here. Type in four and seven. That's fine. The type convex is fine. I'll just show you what some of the other ones do. If you haven't used them before you've got convex which kind of bends outwards linear which will be a straight line so in effect it's the same as doing a, uh, an extruded cap of just one step concave which as you imagine bends inwards like that which is very useful for um, kind of furniture it's quite got some good uses for furniture and kind of ceiling moldings things like that really useful you've also got half circle which goes out and then back in again. Also good for kind of beading and some detailing. The one step, which just takes a chunk out. The two step, which as you guessed, does the same, but with two steps. And then the engraved, which basically makes a profile around the, the size that you've put in, um, which also is very useful for some things, but not for this. For this, we want to use the convex. 
which is just right. Now, so we've got our head and it's smooth enough, you can see what's going on. But how do we get this into a state that we can actually use and then start modifying? Before we do anything to this, I'm just going to add some segments, some cuts along the X axis just to help us out in a little bit. So subdivision, I'm going to knock that up to, let's say five, I think is probably about right. And we don't need to worry about the ISO subdivision. So we've got our extrude nerves. I'm going to press the C key to make this into a polygon object, which you can see it's been done. But if I go into the polygon mode, well, why aren't these part of it? And that's because the two caps, the on the one on each side of the head, they're still separate objects. And if you look in here, you've got the rounding and the cap itself. So the cap is that one polygon. The rounding are these polygons around the edge. That's the kind of convex shape that we made. So we need to open these up, select everything, right click, and in Cinema 4D 11.5, we've got Connect and Delete. If you're using an older version, you've probably got Connect. And the Connect tool works fine, but it does mean you've got a duplicate. So you've got the connected version, which is the duplicate. And then you'll still have the original extrude nerves with the different caps and roundings. So you can delete them. Um, for now, I'm just going to delete those tags it's made because we don't need those. And we've got this object here, which I will call Head base and we can save this as version 4 so save incremental now we've got to this point and you can see now when we add a deformer to this we're only going to need the one deformer and that's the the height one here that makes the chin a bit thinner but we haven't got enough divisions across here to kind of help us we've got the right shape for the side of the head because we've already got that taper built in and that's why we use the spline because it makes it easier to draw in that profile. So we need to take the knife tool and make some cuts across here. But before that, we need to merge some of these. So if I select this polygon and then press the V key, go selection, select connected, you'd expect it to select the whole head because it's one object, but it doesn't. And that's because we need to optimize this mesh because it's made of one, two, three, four, and five different mes mes meshes from the original extrude. So hit the V key, go to functions, and choose optimize. And you get a few options here. Um, you only need to use the default settings here. That's absolutely fine. And now if I select this and select, select connected, which will be UW, or you can go into V selection and select connected. You can see there's a shortcut UW everything is selected so we're in the right way we're looking at the right kind of thing and we're heading in the right direction that's fine so let's get our knife tool and we're going to use the line method and we're going to choose a place for this point to join up the back and I'm going to choose so if you move onto an area you'll see it highlight with the knife tool active we want this point here so wait until that point goes white and then drag onto that line and then move it around until you find a point and that point there is fine so I've now got my cut going right the way across I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side wait until that point is selected go to the bottom of that edge there until the point is highlighted release and we're done Okay, so we've got our head in two parts. I'm probably going to want to add some more cuts across here because we haven't really got enough. So in polygon mode, which we're still in, that's good. I'm going to still in the knife tool as well. I'm going to go into loop and I'm going to add some cuts. But you can see because of the, the way the head is built, our loop isn't doing what you might expect it to. So we're going to have to use a different method and I think the best method here is probably plane. And if we use the XZ plane, which would be flat across, we can then just add a cut there. Let's add a cut across there. And one a bit further down, and maybe one just slightly higher up, like so. Now I'm going to make a few just across the side there as well. And that will be on the ZY. 
works because the z-axis is that way and the y-axis is upwards so actually I've gone the wrong way because I want this to be on the the y-x so I'm just going to add a few they don't have to be perfect just like that will be fine hit the space bar to drop the tool and then as before in the previous video we can add a taper I'm going to up the strength of it a little bit go into my side view just so I can see where I'm placing it and also rotate it around about 180 degrees hold down shift if you want to constrain it to five degrees and just drop that onto the head base and you can see what's going on here we've got limited on um, I'm going to say within the box and I'm going to increase the size of the box just so it encompasses the whole head like so now let's see what we've got I think the strength could do with being just a bit stronger about there okay so this is looking smooth it's looking good I'm actually debating whether I use a second one just to narrow the back of the head somewhat which I think I might do I'm liking this so far but let's add a second one and see if we can make it any better okay so it's up the strength and we'll turn this 90 degrees to start with I think it'll probably be slightly different when we move it into position let's go into the side view bring this up add it to the mesh there and yeah we need to make it a bit taller like this and I think we'll use let's use the top view to sort this one out already looking pretty good actually we can make this very narrow at the back or we can kind of stretch it out but I think we'll go to about about there and this is looking nice this is looking very sharp it's kind of sharp but nice smooth corners front of the face is nice and square I'm actually thinking to myself I prefer this version to the box modeling which is rare I usually prefer box modeling to splines but this is working quite well it's kind of a, a nice combination of the two so let's um, let's save incremental as always it takes up a little bit more hard drive room but that's okay it's worth it because if we want to come back to this stage we can select everything and right click current state to object we can delete that original and now we've got the head base in one polygon object looking great looking just the right kind of dimensions everything's looking good the tapers works really well there's a nice sharpness there the back of the head maybe isn't quite the same as the sketch but I'm finding the shape quite pleasing you can compare it just by going in here now I made that taper a lot a lot lot sharper but I'm actually quite liking it so we'll either use this one or we'll use the box modeling one I haven't decided yet but that's how we've got so far so that's it uh, for as an overview of using extrudes and splines to create a, a more intricate or accurate shape to start with now I've changed that shape by using some deformers but that's not a problem um, but it has made a, a quite a this, is, this looks like if that robot was made for racing rather than some other purpose then this might be you know kind of slightly more streamlined and aerodynamic looking like the front looks more like a windbreak than anything but the the side view the profile looks quite nice so that's it for this video and we'll go back into the next one and um, you'll see then whether I decide to use the box model or the spline modeled version when we start building the parts for the eye and then we're going to start making the the hidden panels for the aerial and the socket for the neck.